Edwin, what did, what did you like about Chelsea's game and what did you like? And also just touch on that Man City inability to navigate big teams this season. Well, I think that especially this season, mm -hmm. when teams have enough time, enough time to prepare for the threats of Man City, they can cause them a lot of problems. And that's where you look at the big games. Teams who have time to prepare for Man City and also the quality mm -hmm. to deal with Man City's quality. And teams who have genuine pace. Up genuine front. pace. Up front. Genuine. Those with the to deal players. with Man City's high line. line. Mm -hmm. yeah. And mm -hmm. we've seen that a lot of times this season. And Chelsea came in with the perfect strategy. I need to say that. Yeah. Pochettino coached a wonderful game right from the start of the he game. He did. Up until a certain point. He coached <laughs> a wonderful game. Chelsea played the perfect away yeah. game. Probably should have got away from this game with more than the yeah. one points that they did. A couple of players who stood out. Obviously, there's the obvious names like Disasi, Malogusto. Yeah, Disasi had a stormer. Who had really good games. Two players who really stood out for me. First one, Cole Palmer. And not just in an offensive sense. This is where wingers need to learn uh -huh. what they need to do. Uh -huh. Not just staying up front, not just contributing to the goals that your team scores. In defensive situations, yeah. you need to be on top. You need to help out your fullback. And I thought Kopama did that fantastic. Fantastic, yeah. He made uh, Malogusto's work even easier in dealing with Jeremy Doku. Uh -huh. A lot mm -hmm. of the times, it wasn't Doku that uh, uh, it wasn't Gusto that Doku was facing up to in yeah. that position. Yeah. It, it was, was constantly Cole Palmer. Cole Palmer. True. That True. is where wingers need to help out their fullbacks because Doku is a dangerous player. Even one on one, mm -hmm. he, he has the beating mm -hmm. of a lot of uh, players in the league. But Gusto had a good game. Besides that, second one, and I know some people will they will be surprised at this. Nicholas Jackson. Yeah. Look, forget the chances he missed. And obviously, as a striker, you can't afford to miss those chances. Mm -hmm. But his hold-up play, the fact his movement uh, on the field, yeah. his link-up play with Sterling and with Cole Palmer, True. brilliant throughout the game. When he was taking off the pitch, Chelsea immediately lost an outlet up front who could hold up the play and occupy the Man City defenders. And mm. I think his, sub uh, his removal was one of the yeah, reasons yeah, so why... So many errors. So many errors. And final point that I want to make, Pochettino's substitutions. Look, I get the reasoning behind the substitutions. First one, Nkuku coming in, yeah. taking off Sterling. Nkuku is a player who normally can deal with uh, the ball in tight spaces, can deal with a he's lot of pressure. He's supposed to be able to do it. the Sterling job Yes, he's supposed to be equally able well. to do it mm -hmm. at a better rate because mm -hmm. he is better with those one-touch passes. He's able to find teammates. Yeah. He's able to beat players as well. So him coming in, I completely understand. And I get it. It was too early in at that stage. Sterling was having a good game. Really good game, yep. So yeah, taking him off at that early the, stage the was not necessary. in my view, more or less pointed out to be a template substitution. Mm. It's something he they would do. Of, yes. They are thought of. But once Sterling was having a good time yeah. out there, you're not allowing him him to go. So that didn't work out because Nkunku didn't have the mm -hmm. best of games. Second substitution, I think... Uh, uh, Trevor Chaloba yeah, adding to the defense, making it a very strong uh, uh, back line, three mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. back to solidify Chelsea's defense. You get that substitution, it made Chelsea stronger at the back. Third substitution, Cesare Cassidy yeah. bringing him on to mm -hmm. do a job. And he brought him on because he wanted an outlet up front. He didn't have anyone else. So yeah. With the height, with the strength of Cassidy, you'd expect him to win aerial balls. And he did a couple of that. Even in defensive situations, because Man City were resorting to crossing a lot of the balls to mm -hmm. Ellen Haaland. Mm -hmm. Having an extra tall player mm -hmm. would have helped. But the fact is, a lot of work was being done by Cole Palmer, yeah. which couldn't have been done by uh, Cesare Cassidy. Mm -hmm. And eventually, Man City got the goal. But I thought that Chelsea played a fantastic game. Now mm. it's up to the players, not just the manager, yeah. to keep up this consistency, this form. I saw a side of Caicedo that I haven't seen much of this yeah, season. Man. He was fantastic. Even after the yellow card, he went into tackles like he was... I was actually um, scared I for was him. scared for him. Mm -hmm. But as a top midfielder, you know that 90% of, of the time you are going to win these tackles. So you are not yeah. afraid to get stuck in. And that is a side of him I want to see, even against uh, Luton Town, mm -hmm. Sheffield mm -hmm. United. A Brentford, we don't see that often enough. Enzo was fantastic, running his socks off, uh, progressing Chelsea up the field. Yeah. Sterling, Copama, we just need to see that side of them consistently, and they can 
uh, fight their way up the table. Mm. But a brilliant performance from Chelsea in this game.